we thank you for so many wonderful healings, <laughs> words of encouragement, yes, Father. Yes. The enemy, <laughs> he's a liar. Yes, yes. <laughs> your word is truth. Yes. And we receive your truth today. Yes, we do. We make our decisions based on your truth. We step out and move yes. based on your truth, not on the lie. Today, we choose you, Father, yes. and we thank you for it. Hallelujah. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you that by his stripes, we are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. Ah, there is nothing that has authority over us but your word, Father. There is nothing in this life that has a name that is not beneath our feet because we're seated together in heavenly places with Jesus at your right hand, far above all of it. Hallelujah. We thank you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. Amen. Yes, I know, I've only got 15 minutes, but to a preacher, that's just like, I'll just use this, brother, that's good. Amen. Yeah, I'm good. I can carry this. I'm, I'm not as strong as you, but I can handle this. Amen. <laughs> I appreciate everybody that serves here, seriously. Amen. I mean, all of y'all that are just so willing to help at, at anything. I mean, that's, you know, having a, a servant's heart is, is one of the earmarks of a believer. Amen. I, it doesn't matter who you are or, or, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a pastor or, or you know, the pastor of 30,000. You, you have to keep a servant's heart about you. And I, I just want to say I appreciate that about, about so many of you that I know. And, and those of you that I don't know that for a fact, I'll just believe it about you anyways. I'll, I'll give it to you on credit. Amen? Amen. Uh, just a few things. I don't have time to get into this whole message, and, and, and nor do, do I need to, uh, because God has, you know, uh, you know he, he served the... He served the meal first, amen. But I want to, I want to touch on, I do want to touch on some things uh, in that uh, don't allow the enemy to keep you in a place of, of condemnation, to keep you in a place where, where you are being controlled or hindered in, from the life that God has for you. You know, sickness and disease uh, mental uh, issues, and I'm, I'm not talking about, well, they're crazy. No, and it can be that, and I say that with all seriousness. Uh, I'm talking about just the weight, the mental and emotional strain of life at times that, that it is as debilitating as cancer, as paralysis. It, in fact, for some people, they are actually paralyzed by the, the, the constraints that their life and circumstance has put on them. You know, that is demonic. That's demonic. Jesus, when he saw people being abused, it, it just like, he, he's, he's a good father, and Jesus is a picture. He said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. And Jesus is prepared every time. It does, you don't have to wait for a special service to receive the, the peace and the freedom that he has for you. Amen? Amen. But what I want you to understand is it, sometimes we get in condemnation because we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We are genuinely born again, but somehow life still has its attachments. Our old nature still has issues. It still, it still has cords and threads that are, that are linked to us. And it tries so hard to reel us back into our old life and our old circumstance and our old way of thinking. You say, well, my circumstance hasn't changed. It has changed, but because simply 
simply because you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you remember over there in Mark's Gospel in the 11th chapter, when Jesus was hungry and he went to that fig tree, and, the, and it was the season for figs, there was no reason. It was a healthy tree. It had full, beautiful leaves, just no fruit. And Jesus cursed that fig tree and walked away. And when they came by the next day, Peter and the other disciples noticed that that fig tree had dry, that he had cursed was withered up. And Scripture says that it had withered up from the root. Yes. See, God does a work in you at the root first. Yes. You are different. Yes. Because when you became born again, he started at the place that meant the most. He started at the place where life begins, at your root, in your spirit, man. He made you a new creature from the inside out. And that process can take time, and it's a renewal process and the renewing of our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. Sometimes we, but we get this image, sometimes we look like Lazarus coming out of the grave. You remember over there when, when Jesus was talking, uh, uh, when Jesus went to Lazarus' tomb and he had been in there for four days and, and, uh, and he, he went to where it was and it said that it was a cave and there was a stone that was in front of it. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, as he came out, the Bible says that he was still bound. Although he was alive and moving, he was still bound in grave clothes. And he had to command those that were there with him, see, he said, loose him and let him go. Yes. See, there are attachments to our life, grave clothes, if you will. They're not a part of your new life, but they are signs and remnants of the old. And they, they attach themselves, and you're alive in Christ, but, but there are still things in your life that are kind of binding you, and you're doing your best to go forward. But I want you to know you're not alone, that God has moved on, He is there with you, and He has moved on the hearts of other people like today that to, are there to, to stand with you, to help you get the grave clothes off, to be loosed and set free. Whatever lie the enemy is, is trying to inundate your thinking with, know this, to whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And it doesn't matter what that grave cloth is. Maybe it's an illness. Maybe it's you know, some sort of physical condition. I was down in, in uh, my family and I, we were down in Texas for a few days this past week, and uh, we, uh, we had a, a, a home group, home church, uh, if you will, and, and uh, I, I, I spoke, we had a, a small worship team, and then another gentleman uh, that I actually went to school, Tavi and I went to school with spoke, and he was talking about how he was born with club feet. And uh, his dad, when he was a little boy, he said, you know, of course, you have to know Dustin, and, and maybe we'll have him come share sometime because he's dynamic, but... Uh, you know, Dustin said, you know, his brothers, everybody make fun of him because he's like, run, Forrest. You know, he's falling and tripping over himself because he has these club feet as a little boy. And he said his dad got radically saved and, and was believing God that, that, that he was going to be, that he was healed. And he laid hands on him, prayed for him, and, and he said, and nothing happened, you know. <laughs> he said, but, huh? Oh, so yeah, or so he thought, or so his mom thought. Because... It wasn't that day, and I don't know, it might have been a day or two later. But all of a sudden, as he's out there trying to keep up with his brothers, running in the yard with his club feet, he started sprinting and running past his brothers. Oh, yeah. Amen. And his mom, seeing this, falls, I mean, just beside herself, right? And she's yelling and going, oh, looking at him. And so she gets on the phone and calls her husband, and he can't understand a word she's saying. <laughs> And so he's like, something's wrong. And so he comes racing back home. And he's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she said, look at Dustin. He's, he said, what? What? He said, look at him. Look at his feet. They're healed. I knew that. And he turned around and went back to work. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's a good story. Amen. And it's not, it's a, it's a true event. Not just a story to... To encourage you like some light anecdote but it's just to show you that God doesn't work from the inside out whatever you think or about what happened today those of you that we prayed for maybe maybe you feel like your feet are still clubbed but no God's doing a work on the inside out 
Amen. Don't turn loose of your faith. Dustin's dad didn't turn loose of his faith. He wasn't moved by what he didn't see immediately when he prayed. Amen. Don't be moved, those of you that, got, that have received Christ and sometimes it just looks like the same life. Don't be moved by what you see. But be moved by what you know and that is the life that God has given you. You know that you're a new creature. Somebody asked me the other day, we were talking in, in, about understanding, not recognizing or knowing the Holy Spirit. Well, I get sometimes we don't understand all the details, but the bottom line is you know when He's made you a new person. You know, you, you just know that you know that you know. Amen. I can't explain it. I just know. You know, and, and you know, but knowing, it's, it, but knowing is what matters. When you're convinced on the inside that it may look the same on the outside, but I know something's happening. I recognize the Holy Spirit and what he's doing. I'm not finished, but neither is God. The word is working. Don't turn, don't buy into the grave clothes. Don't buy into the grave clothes. And if you need help, amen, God is already dealing with some people around you in your life. He's, God, God's calling people alongside of you, not just so you have someone to sit with in church, not just so you can make a little small group and then, and, or be involved. It's, it's not for social reasons, and social reasons are fine. It's to help you grow and help them grow. Amen? Amen. Those grave clothes are coming off in Jesus' name. God's speaking to you right now, and, and He's speaking to hearts, and He's saying, loose them and let them go. Amen. Get in agreement with, with God on your life. Get in agreement with how He sees you. He sees you free. He sees you healed. Get in agreement with that. Don't buy into the lie of the enemy that says you're still dead. You're not dead. You're alive. You may have some, some issues, some, some things that are trying to hold you back, to pull you back into your old life. You may still have some, some attachments, some things that, that, that you're believing God through. Don't turn loose of that. Believe God that you are going to be completely set free. Amen? Amen. Amen. Grave clothes are just simply uh, the signs of, of, uh, of where we've been. Amen? You know, it's, it, as they say, you know, the old saying, it's the clothes that make the man. Right? Well, it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not the clothes that make the man. It's just a sign of where we've been in life. It's just a symbol of where we've been. God's got new clothes for you. Amen. He's got, he's, got a, he's got brand new clothes. Clothing is a symbol of salvation, and we see it through the Word. Uh, you know, it, 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 it shows who we are when we come into that new life. Amen. I, uh, uh, Zechariah in chapter 3 talks about Joshua. It says, Now Joshua with clo was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with a change of raiment. In Mark's gospel, we see blind Bartimaeus. And in those days, it was common uh, uh, for beggars to actually have a uniform, so to speak. Uh, it, it, and what I mean by that, that they, were, they had a cloak or a coat that would signify who they were. It was a beggar's cloak. It, it, you could recognize, you didn't have to ask them if they were a beggar. You could see that they were a beggar based upon what they wore. Clothing and garments were symbols of, of your position in life and just where you were at. And in Mark's gospel, uh, it, talking to, it, when it shares that story of blind Bartimaeus, it says, And Jesus stood still and commanded him, blind Bartimaeus, to come. To come. And, and they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calls you. And it says this about Bartimaeus. When he heard that, he said, He casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus. He was crying out. He heard Jesus. He heard the, the noise and the procession. He couldn't see it, but he could hear it. And he started crying out, Jesus, Jesus. And they were saying, shut up, shut up. You know. And, and finally, when Jesus heard Bartimaeus calling, he said, hey, 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 have him come to me. And now, then everybody's like, oh, be of good comfort. The master calls. <laughs> All right? Oh, he, oh, Jesus likes him. Oh, therefore, you know, you know how that is. You know how people are? Yeah. 
But when he heard Jesus call for him, he laid aside the beggar's garments. He, he knew before the manifestation of his eyes being opened, he knew that that position in life was over. Amen. That's what faith looks like. Start casting those garments away. You don't, that's not your identity. That pain, that illness, that's not your identity. Let it go. Cast it to the side. Start confessing over your life who you are in Christ, that you are the healed of the Lord, that your mind is filled with God's peace. Amen? That your life is filled with God's blessing. Amen? You're the blessed of the Lord. It says, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it, neither does toil increase it. Amen. God's got favor for you that it doesn't, you, it doesn't matter how hard you, you could not add to yourself what God wants to add to you. Simply by putting your faith and trust in Him and walking out the life He has in front of you. Luke's Gospel in the 15th chapter, we see the story of the prodigal son. And it says, And the son said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servant, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put, on a ring, put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither a fatted calf and, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. Amen. Amen. Grave clothes are coming off, church. Amen. Grave clothes are coming off. Amen. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to keep lying to you and deceiving you into, into staying in them. Be patient. Sometimes it takes a little bit. And sometimes it takes help to get those clothes off. But, but know this, they're coming off. They've got to come off in Jesus' name. They've got to come off. That's not your identity in, anymore. God's got new clothes for you. He's got a new, new raiment for you. It is, it is a garment of salvation and a robe of righteousness, the Bible says. It is the garment, the undergarment that seals you in salvation. But then it is a robe of righteousness, which is your position in God. You're not just some, some saved person hidden in the corner of heaven. No, you're a child of God. You're seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ. You have a robe that tells everybody who you are. They don't have to come ask you. They can see from across the room the righteousness of God that's on you in Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us that, that, that our faith would become more effective by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in us that is in Christ. Amen? Start acknowledging those things. Oh, you know, I'm just an idiot. Quit saying that. Well, nothing ever works out for me. Quit saying that. Acknowledge who you are in Christ. It's not bragging about you. Well, I'm wonderful. No, Christ is wonderful. Amen. Christ is wonderful. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. That doesn't sound so bad, does it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does that sound braggadocious? No, it's just truth. Start speaking the truth in your life. Speak the truth over yourself every day. Don't buy into the lie. Don't keep tightening and fixing the grave clothes. Amen? Don't use them as a sign of sympathy. No. no? You want to be free of it? Start confessing who you are in Christ. Amen. Get your brothers and sisters that God's put in your life to help you. Get in agreement. Get free today, church. Amen? Amen. Is God good or what? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, uh, if, if every head bow, could bow and every eye could close... I don't want to end any service. We've had tremendous healings. Amen. People healed completely of arthritis, moving their neck and their shoulders in ways they couldn't right up here, just like that. Boom. God's so awesome. Amen. So easy for God. It's so easy for Him because it's already been done. You say, well, how, how is it already done? He did it through Jesus 2,000 years ago. The Bible says that He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Those words translate of you. You're kind of nerdy like me about that stuff and you look at it in the original text. It also signifies our, our pains and our diseases and our sickness. 
He took all of that, and we saw a manifestation of that. We saw that happen here just a bit ago. You know, that's not the best part. The best part and the most miraculous part was that he took your life out of eternal death and put it in a place that it, all you have to do is receive him by faith. And you wouldn't have to be bound anymore by death. You wouldn't have to be caught in those grave clothes sealed up in that tomb. You're not damned for eternity. You've got hope today. Picture with me, if you will, and then let your mind go to a life free. A life that has peace. A life that when you look out over your future has you with joy succeeding in what it is you were created to do. Why are you here? You're here for God's purpose. And if you'll give that life back to Him, if you'll put yourself in His hands, if you'll make Jesus Christ not just your Savior, but your Lord, if you'll do that today, I promise you, you'll live a life that you could never accomplish by yourself. You'll live a life you never thought possible. Will it be challenged? Absolutely. Challenge is good. The Bible says that the very seed of God's Word is specifically designed to flourish under pressure. It says when persecution, in the parable of the sower said, when persecution comes for the sake of the Word, or when offense came for the sake of the Word, opposition is going to come, but God's Word is designed to take the pressure of the world and to manifest, to flourish, to grow, to produce you're going to live a victorious life. Is there anyone in here who say, yeah, Pastor, that's me. I'm ready. I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. I'm ready for that victorious life. I'm ready not just to call Him my Savior, but I'm ready to make Him my Lord. Does everyone say, yeah, that's me? Amen.